Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Sunday. We're going to talk about your rights as a patient, what you need to do to be a patient advocate if you're dealing with the medical system, if you're heading into surgery, heading into the hospital, even dealing with a doctor, a physician, anybody who is treating you. This is really the next 30 minutes to talk about how to empower yourself and ask the right questions. Be your own advocate in your health. Joining us today is uh, Paula Williams. She's a 30-year nurse, PhD. She's a local professor of nursing. She's our guest on Newsmaker Sunday, and she has written the book. It's really more of a, a pamphlet. It's a handbook. It is called Hospital Stay 101, a safety handbook for healthcare and consumers. Paula Williams, our guest on Newsmaker Sunday. Great to see you again. Thank you, We John. go back, actually, a long way. We've done nursing events in the past, and it's good to have you on the program. Absolutely. Tell me what caused you, what prompted you to write this? Put it down. This is a 30-year project, believe it or not. When I was in nursing school, I almost made a medication error. I took the medication into the patient, and she stopped me and she says, Paula, I'm used to getting a blue pill, and you're giving me a pink pill. And John, that's the single most lesson I can recall from nursing school. That's the biggest lesson you learned. That's the biggest lesson I learned. Now, as you teach, um, you're teaching nurses how to do their thing. I do. How to get out in the world and work in a hospital or wherever they're going to work. Mm -hmm. That stuck with you. That stuck with me, and I pass it on to the nurses. When, when people go into the hospital, I think there is this, it's changed a little bit. My mom was a nurse as well. Wonderful, yeah. Um, that the doctor is always right. Not anymore. The doctors are not going to like this. They won't like it, but we're humans and we I make mistakes. I suspect good doctors won't object. No, they won't. A good do doctor would be fine with that because, you know, we're, we're here to protect our own health. And the doctor is a stranger to you when you come into the hospital. And the nurses as well. So when you, when you go in, what are, the, what are the, a couple of the questions you need to ask? You run through this in the book, and we can go through kind of the headings in the book, and I'll, and I'll ask you. But Hospital Stay 101, mm -hmm. let's start there. Well, Hospital Stay 101 means that. It's basic information, how to take care of yourself in the hospital. You need to know what's going on with your care. Before and you go in. If you have a procedure coming up, you need to find out what find the game Find out plan. what it is. Read up on it. Absolutely. So you're well informed before you sign the consent to go ahead with that procedure. You know, I have heard people say, um, and it's happened to me, you start asking a lot of questions and the doctor's like, where are you getting all this stuff? Well, I'm, I'm researching it on the internet. I, I suspect the internet could be <laughs> a doctor's nightmare. It is, in a sense, but it empowers you to ask these questions so that the doctor can confirm what you know. And when you are met with resistance as a patient, if you're asking a bunch of questions and the doctor is kind of getting annoyed? I think the way you approach the doctor is going to be the key. You, you're respectful, and the same way he has to be respectful to you. Now remember, this is your life, one life that you need to protect. And John, you don't want someone telling you they're sorry. So your biggest, your biggest takeaway in this whole thing is you need to be strong. Absolutely. You need to ask questions and not feel guilty about it. Absolutely, because it's your life. Why would we not want to protect our own life? Okay, uh, story. Mm -hmm. um, someone that I know quite well goes in to have a procedure done at a very reputable hospital in town. Okay. In the twilight phase of going under, she is asking, where is Dr. So-and-so, who is really, really good at what this procedure involves? Well, I'm going to be doing the procedure, and it's another doctor. She actually demanded to stop and said, I'm sorry, but I, I expected and, and demand that doctor, the doctor I thought was going to do the procedure yeah. will do it. And I'm proud of her for doing that because... Is this unusual? It happens. I mean, in a teaching hospital, this goes on all the time, right? Well, they're supposed to let you know that they're going to do that. And that's why it's important to have an advocate with you. 
So if you're under or in the twilight, you have someone who can speak up on your behalf. Who would that be? A close family friend, your spouse, somebody you trust. Is the, does a nurse become often the de facto if point you, person? If you don't have someone, yes. That, that nurse can speak on your behalf. So when, now, we're, we're assuming now you go into the hospital under your own power or you know what's going on. But what if you're wheeled into an emergency room? Then all bets are kind of off, right? Well, in the emergency room, the same thing stands. You have the right to know what they're doing, and you have a right to question what they're doing. You know, they're, if they're going to do x-rays on you, know why they're doing the x-ray. Know why they, they ordered the certain medications for you. Now, yeah. you. You shared with me a story of you and your daughter. Now, I guess you're also the doctor's worst nightmare <laughs> because you know so much. You go in to have your child vaccinated. Yes. And tell me what happened and what you did. Well, when they were little, I um, had their regular checkup. And the nurse would come in with a syringe already pre-filled. And I would respectfully say to her, do not take this the wrong way. But I need for you to bring the original vial in, unopened, and pull the medication up in front of me. I would like to read that label because I want to know what you're giving my child. I don't want you to tell me you're sorry because you walked into the wrong room. And it does happen. It can happen. It, ha it has happened. It has we know happened. Um, there's a case of, of uh, six juveniles, and I can't remember what state, getting a dose of adult vaccine or adult uh, medication. Yes. And had those parents ask, that would avoid that error. We had a guy who was amputated on the wrong leg. That was out that, of Florida? That's very sad, yes. And as you reminded me, um, not only do they take the only good leg he had, um, but they have to amputate the bad leg. This guy's now a double, double amputee. Yes. So you have to ask questions. You have to ask questions. And the other thing I tell the patients is that you need to write on your leg, do not touch this leg. Feel free to do that. Write it in bold magic yeah. marker. Absolutely. Indelible ink. You'll okay, you that. say what to bring. What to bring is one of the subheadings. What you'll take to the hospital is your current medication list. If not, take your medications with you. So you can transfer that information to your medical record. So they will know what medications you're currently taking so that the transition of care will be smooth. We've talked about being your own personal advocate, but you talk about um, nurse advocate. Is that kind of what we talked about, picking out a nurse and saying, I need you to help me through this? Well, nurses are assigned to your care. And if for some reason you feel that that relationship isn't working, you can ask for your nurse to be changed. Um, I mean, this is basic, but you, I don't think a lot of us would ever think of it. Mm. Staff identification. Absolutely, because you have different levels of staff that come in to take care of you, and we all wear scrubs. Now, currently hospitals are trying to identify nurses by color so they will know, but they're all required to wear a badge with their photo ID. So someone can't come in and say, I'm a nurse. You don't want someone to come in and do something to your IV because they're in scrubs. You need to know who your nurse is. Do, have you seen or heard of doctors or nurses walking in to the wrong room thinking they're treating patient A and they're actually treating patient B? Does that happen? The chances there that that can happen. I don't have something documented. This is a rare thing still. It's still though, rare. Right? There's still checks and balances. We don't want to give any impression that no. it's reckless out there. No, it's not. But you have the right to just trust but verify. Absolutely. Okay. Um, doctors in your care, what does that mean? Well, as I mentioned to you before, you're assigned a doctor that's going to coordinate your care. But say you have a kidney problem. He's not a specialist in kidney. So he will refer you to a nephrologist. So you need to know who that nephrologist is. And you also need to know that plan that the nephrologist has for you. And the other thing that sometimes, you know, we want to encourage doctors to speak to each other. And that way you're involved and you know what doctor is doing what for you. When you're teaching now this new crop of young nurses coming in, mm -hmm. and we're talking men and women, this used Absolutely, to be a yes. female dominated not anymore. deal and it's not. Um, what is, are you seeing a, a shift in how they view the medical profession from when you got in or when my mom got in? You know, back then the doctor was always right. 
My mom used to talk about this a lot. Well, currently, today, it's more of a collaborative care, so we need to listen to each other. So it's no longer hierarchy where the doctor is on top. The nurses are with the patient most of the time. Right, they see they're, the what's first, going. they're the front line of defense. Right, they're the eyes and ears. And they can now tell the doctor, this is what I'm finding. And it's the onus is on the doctor to respond to that, what the nurse is telling him. Have you had patients in your experience pull you aside and say, I am uncomfortable with what's happening here? And kind of pull you in to where you become their advocate? Yes, and I do tell them that if they have some concerns, we want to know. And the hospital wants them to verify that they have these problems. And they will do something about it. So if it, you're not getting it solved at the lower level, you escalate it up to the upper level. Okay, Paula, we're talking we talking to Paula Williams, who is the author of, of this book. Um, it's really a, a guide, a how-to, Hospital Stay 101, a safety handbook for healthcare consumers. We're talking a lot about hospitals. What about shopping for a doctor, figuring out who you want to treat you? What's the best way now to go about picking a doctor? Well, the best way is to go by the referral system for the insurance company that you have. Yeah, right. If you're and in United, you've got to go through their network and figure out. But then from that list, how do you decide? Well, what I do, what I suggest you do, is you take a look at the doctor's practice. How long has he been in practice? And you can also see if they have any negative information on them. That that would be a red light for you. That would be a state uh, Bomex deal. You would yes. go to the Bomex website, yes. punch in their name, and find out what's going on. Right. Now, a single complaint, that could be an easy thing for somebody to file. You have to kind of weed through what was the severity, what was the issue. Right. You can do that. It's all there on the web, right? Right. And also, if you know someone who, like if you have a friend who's a nurse or a friend who's a doctor, they can make recommendations too. Because they know. They, they know. kind of know the players. Absolutely. Okay, what about these ratings that you run across? You see like one star, two star, three star. Is this advertising or is this something you can actually lean on as a consumer? Can I you trust it? I don't believe that I would, John, and that's a personal opinion because sometimes it's based on popularity and not efficiency. Okay. So it's up to you to decide, you know, if, if that doctor is going to be the right one for you. What about these publications that periodically come out and say, top doc in this and that and the other thing? Yeah. Is well, this reliable? Well, what I suggest is that you meet the doctor and kind of do a mini interview to find out a little bit oh, about them. Oh, you're, you're flipping this now. I'm you're one interviewing those. the doctor. Absolutely. And he doesn't even have to know you're interviewing him. But you want to know, where did you go to medical school? How long have you been in practice? And you, you ask those questions. Now, one of the things I think is important that I've run across personally mm -hmm. is whatever you are going to have done, find out how skilled they are and practice they are at that procedure. That is perfect. Not even the general practice, mm -hmm. but how many arthroscopic knees have you done? That's a smart thing. Right? Very smart. Okay, but I'm a reporter. I do this kind of thing for a living. I ask a lot of questions. Right. You, we've got a minute left in this segment. The biggest obstacle that you've seen from the patient end, a lot of patients don't want to be assertive. It makes them uncomfortable to go into a doctor with shingles on the wall, a lot of advanced degrees, and they're now asking a bunch of questions. They're intimidated. This is why it's important to have a family member or someone who is not intimidated that can ask these questions. Because culturally, too, you'll find that, you know, there are people in some certain cultures who are very docile and they'll never speak up. What about the elderly? The elderly as well is another um, category of consumers that need that help. So find an advocate. It's got to be the, the if, if someone's elderly, it's got to be their son or daughter if they have extended family to come in and help them out. Absolutely. Navigate. It's also another set of ears. Yes. When you're talking to the doctor. Yes. About what's going on. And as I told you before, you, you know, you hold them accountable to your care. And this way, you know, you feel a little bit more comfortable that you're being a part of your care. And you do know what's going on. So if somebody is going to do something that you are not familiar with, right. you can call them on it. And you have the right to pull the plug you on the anything right. you're having done at any moment. You Absolutely. can say, we're not doing this today. Yes. I'm not, I'm not happy with this. Yes. Okay. 
The, um, I'll call it a handbook. It is called Hospital Stay 101. Dr. Paula Williams, she uh, has her PhD as an RN, a nurse for 30 years. She's written this pamphlet. It's kind of a guide if you're going in and you're having anything done, the things you need to know. Arm yourself with knowledge. We're back with uh, Ms. Paula Williams here in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. Back on Newsmaker Sunday, we're talking about being your own advocate or at least finding an advocate when you're seeking medical care. If you're going into the hospital, if you're looking for a doctor, what should you know? And the person who knows this subject very well is Paula Williams. She's a nurse of 30 years. She has written this handbook. It's available on Amazon, by the way. Hospital Stay 101, a safety handbook for healthcare consumers. Why did you feel it was so necessary to, to write this? I think that, you know, as a healthcare consumer, you have the right to know how you're receiving your healthcare. And, you know, the hospitals are mandated to provide the highest possible care for you. And they want to do that. They're happy to know that you're part of your care. Because if you're engaged, John, you leave the hospital a lot sooner than if you're just lying there not taking part in your care. You've got to be your, you've got to be your best friend and advocate. Yes. You, you have to be, or somebody near you has to know what the game plan is. Know what the game plan is and be a part of it. Okay, what if doctors are switched up on you? You think you're going to get Dr. So-and-so to uh, treat you, and so all of a sudden somebody's rolling in. It may be a resident. It may be somebody else. That's an uncomfortable position for the patient to be in to say, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? Yes, and they, you know, they should get an explanation as to why there's a change. But also remember, if they're journaling what they need to know about their care, then they can pass that information on. So it's really sometimes not a bad thing if a new person comes in, if I know what the plan is. You talked about checking medication. This is really important because we did a story recently, I did, on a nursing home, where a nurse in a nursing home was criminally, I believe, swapping medication out, stealing the medication, and substituting it, in this case, with a malaria drug that looked identical to the pain medication. I heard about that. Horrible. And, yeah, that's very sad. But one of the things I encourage is for nurses not to open the medication until they're with the patient. These are blister packs that we commonly well, see, the bubble The pack. information is on there, John. Uh -huh. And, and you as a patient need to say, I want to see the medication before you open it. So you can verify what you're getting. Now on the ground, in real life, when this mm -hmm. happens, and you say that to somebody, mm -hmm. do they get annoyed or put off or offended? I'm talking about the nurse or the doctor. Then they're not the nurse or the doctor for you. If they're going to get offended, they should not get offended. You have that right to know, and so you need to exercise that right. This is one of the things you try to break down in your pamphlet here, in your book. Yes. Is to get over the stigma of worrying about offending these people. They're working for you. They're strangers working for you. And you're a number to them after you leave. You know, you either come into the hospital and get safe care, or if something goes wrong, you may not leave the hospital, or you leave the hospital worse than you came in. There's a couple of basics in here that I would have never even thought about. Okay. You even question hand washing, making sure everybody's washing their hands. And yeah, I would never even think. I'm like, this has got to be, you know, a normal practice. But sometimes it gets overlooked. It, it gets missed sometimes, but your hands carry the most germs. So it's important that before a nurse or somebody touches you, have them wash their hands. And this is how stuff spreads in the hospital. That's how it spreads. That's a primary uh, spread. Yes. Um, you talk about a treatment plan. Treatment plan means knowing kind of what the game plan is, right? Correct. You should have that written down or notes taken that you can refer to? It's good for you to have a journal so you can write things down that you may forget or that you really find important to remember. You talk about blood samples. What does that refer to? Blood samples are your lab work right. that the doctor may order for you. So you need to know what those results are. There are a lot of patients who do not ask what those results are. Informed consent. Informed consent. That is when you're giving the okay for a procedure to be done. And you need to be informed on what they're going to do before you sign it. I have to be honest, when I've been given forms in doctor's offices, 
I'm not reading them over very thoroughly, I gotta be honest. Yeah. But at least you know what they're going to do, John. Right. You know, if, if they're gonna replace your knee, they have to tell you exactly what they're gonna do and they have to tell you your expectations after. And once you're okay and you're clear on what's going to happen, then you sign your consent. Okay, we are back in a moment with uh, Paula Williams, who has written this um, kind of a guide, a how-to. It's available on Amazon, by the way. Hospital Stay 101, a safety handbook for healthcare consumers. We're back in a minute. Closing thoughts with uh, Ms. Williams in a moment on Newsmaker Sunday. She's a 30-year nurse, uh, PhD now. Paula Williams is our guest on Newsmaker Sunday, and she is really um, crusading for healthcare consumers to be their own best advocate. She's written this pamphlet, Hospital Stay 101, and it is available on Amazon. I want to let you know. This is kind of a how-to and what you need to know before you go into the hospital, um, even if you're looking for a doctor or trying to figure out what to do with your health care. Uh, final, final moments we've got in the program. Let me just ask you, in your 30 years, what has changed the most in the medical profession that you've seen? Well, one of the key things we've gone to now is electronic. So everything is electronic. We're trying to get away from paper. So when a nurse is medicating you, for example, they will scan your armband to make sure that it's you, and they will also scan the medication to verify that oh. it's the right medication. So this isn't just a clerical thing. This is actually on the ground helping avoid mistakes. Absolutely. They're doing everything to avoid mistakes and they would appreciate it if you, the consumer, would help them improve those statistics. Uh, chapter 32. This is a very easy read, by the way. Chapter 32, it's, these chapters are not long, but they're, they're very interesting. Speak up, ask questions, get answers. Yes. That's, That's a bottom line. Yes, that you need to learn to speak up. And as we've said throughout this segment, is that if you're not comfortable doing it, because the, the elderly population are still not comfortable sometimes speaking up. They're not assertive. So you get someone who's not afraid to speak up. And that way you can get answers. You need to get answers. It's amazing to me that patients will have things done and they will never question it. And they put their lives at risk. Just because they, they don't need question, to. they need to. And question. you said, you told me there is actually a national campaign going on about this. Well, the Joint Commission accredits hospital, and uh, they have a campaign or several campaigns going on about speaking up. So, if you need to know about infection, you need to speak up. They have actually brochures on their website that patients can download. So there's a national campaign to try to empower patients to ask questions. Yes. Are the, are the next breed of physicians coming in understanding that patients are going to quiz you? They've got a lot of information at their disposal because of the Internet now. Yes. Patients are probably more informed than ever about what they're getting into. Yes. But there's still a segment of the population that is still not informed. Y yourself is, is an example. There are certain things you still didn't know. Oh, even yeah. Even though you're an educated... No uh -huh. One of the biggest, we've got a minute left, one of the biggest fears in a hospital setting is infection. Is there yes. anything that a patient can do to protect themselves from infection in a hospital? Well, the very first thing is to remember to tell you, the staff to wash their hands if they haven't done so. And if you have family visiting, the same thing. Just have them wash their hands. The transmission of germs has been proven to be what's causing increased infection when it's not related to your diagnosis. Um, you, you arrived at, at kind of writing this after 30 years in the, in the, in the medical the field. field. Yes. What would you like people, we've got 30 seconds, what would you like people to take away from this? Well, you know, John, parents of children and the adult, you know, the teenagers really don't care at this point, but they have parents. <laughs> you know, they're young and, and invincible. Right. But they have parents who should look out for them. And they, too, having this information could also teach them that if something should happen to you and you end up in the hospital, start having these practices. And ask questions. Ask questions. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You just want to know. It's your body that you're trying to protect. One your life. life. One life. One life. One Paula, life. great to see you again. Thank you, John. It's Thank my pleasure. Thank you for this. This is good. This will arm consumers with some important information. We'll see you next week on Newsmaker Sunday. Thank you, Paula. Thank you.